As far as materials, you will need a rolling pin, a canvas surface to work on, cookie cutters of your choice, and of course, clay. I'm using this wonderful Amico air dry clay that feels just like kiln fire clay. If you have access to a kiln, great. If not, you can even use homemade modeling clay. Just keep in mind, every clay is different and the most uh, durable clay will be kiln fire clay, but I have found the air dry clay for ornaments works just as well. I am kneading um, about a handful of clay together and I'm pattying it like a hamburger patty so that I can then have a kind of flattish even surface to roll out with my rolling pin. Always roll your clay multiple directions and it might be hard to kind of get it going at first so move it around often and move the direction of your rolling pin. My canvas board slides around a little bit but that's okay because I'm working pretty small for this. I'm using a star cookie cutter. Um, it is a little bit of a complex shape because it has those five points. So I'm gonna roll it out so it's not too thin. The thinner the clay, the more fragile it is. And I am using air dry clay, so I wanna be very aware of that. So now that it's nice and even, um, and I feel like it's not too thin, I'm going to show you why it's best to let your clay dry a little before using your cookie cutter. So this is brand spanking new fresh clay. I'm using my Star Metal Cookie Cutter. The metal cookie cutters work much better than the plastic. And without letting the clay kind of firm up and dry a little, you can see it's very pliable to the point of it changes its shape a lot coming out of the cookie cutter. So could I use the cookie cutter now? Sure, but I'm going to let my clay get to leather hard. I'm just gonna let it sit on my canvas. I could put it in front of a fan um, or I could just be patient. And look at the difference here. See how the clay is keeping its form? That's when you know your clay is ready for the cookie cutter. Now, just like I'm making sugar cookies, I'm going to stamp out my star until I run out of space. And you could make bigger slabs, more slabs, thicker slabs, thinner slabs, whatever it is your goal is. Um, and I'm just going to carefully remove it. You can see it's still gonna stick a little bit, but it should be much easier to hold its form. It's gonna always need a little bit of working after it comes out of the cookie cutter. Um, and let's see how many of these we can get. I did try that tiny little star cookie cutter and I just had a hard time getting the little star out of the cookie cutter, so I gave up on that one. So um, what shape your ornament is does matter. The more complex the edges, the harder it is, of course, to get good results. Now that I have three stars I'm happy with, I'm going to finesse and make the edges smooth and I'm going to make sure that everything is flat. It is very important to add your hole or holes for hanging your ornament way before your clay dries. So the leather hard stage, you wouldn't want to go any further than that. If it's bone dry and you poke a needle tool through it, it will crack. It will break into a million pieces. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see how the clay is still pliable, even though it is leather hard. And you do want to poke through both directions because sometimes the clay that's pushed through will close up on the other side. So be aware of that and also be aware of is it a ribbon, a piece of twine, is it wire that you're using to hang and make sure that the hole is thick enough for whatever it is you're hanging it from. Um, for this, I'm going to try a technique where I put two holes because instead of just one star ornament, which is really easy, right? Cookie cutter, let it dry, hang a ribbon through it. I'm going to try a three star design um, and then since I want it to hang kind of like a mobile, I am going to put two holes. So you can see I have one at the top point and then one at the center. So pick whatever angle works best. And it depends on the shape. If you're doing like a heart, for example, you would do one at the point and then one at where the two parts of the heart meet together. Also, this is optional. You can just do the one hole. Um, that's very simple. And then I'll show you at the end how to string them together if you wanna have a, mo a more multi-layered ornament. Let your ornaments get to bone dry. Let them sit out um, for 24 hours until they are no longer cold to the touch and they have changed to almost a white color. Then I'm taking a shish kebab stick and very carefully making sure that the holes are open and ready for the hanging device. I haven't decided what I'm using yet. Um, you don't wanna paint clay when there's still moisture in it, so it being bone dry is very important. Then you need to decide how you wanna decorate them. And I'm going the easy way. I found this gold spray paint. There are so many different ways that you can decorate air dry clay, acrylic paint, shoe polish, watercolor, colored pencils, oil pastels, spray paint, metallic dry brush. The list just goes on and on. Make sure if you're using um, a spray paint or whatever, you have to do both sides because if it's hanging from a Christmas tree or hanging from you know a doorknob, wherever this is gonna go, you want both sides to be decorated. 
Once your paint has dried, it's time to connect your ornaments or simply add a ribbon or an ornament hook in one of the holes that you created. Since I created a series of three, I'm gonna string them together and I'm gonna show you two options to do that. I'm taking some jewelry thread that I bought and I'm looping through the bottom hole and then simply like a sewing stitch coming back on the other side through the top. With this method, you will see the string on the back. So if that bothers you, um, and you can knot it from there too. You can also connect it with a very thin jewelry wire. So this is like a 24 gauge copper wire. And then instead of looping where you can see the line, you can loop a loop from the bottom of one of your ornaments to the top of the other. What I like about wire is it really holds its form. Whereas if you're using like string or twine, um, the ornaments will move a little bit more. And then a small gauge wire, you can kind of manipulate how your uh, ornaments hang. You could also decorate these with beads. You could put, you know, a row of beads on each one. You could add beautiful decorative ribbons, or you could keep it simple and just do one ornament with an ornament hook that you can buy at a craft store. So here's my finished ornament. Perfect for hanging on a tree, decorating a potted plant, giving as a gift. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado. And my website, thatartteacher.com, has completely free resources for the classroom and for making art at home.